Hey, everybody, it's me, Michael Anthony Judasissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid. <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. Got the uh, headphones set up. I didn't like the way my voice sounded on the last video. I sounded like this. Not really sure what was going on there, so... And not really sure this will make it any better. But thanks for joining me tonight. So more photographs of potentially Billy the Kid and some more research around one of the photographs that we've taken a brief look at. But before we do that, let's do this. The first Billy the Kid live. Think of it like the Tonight, the tonight Show where Billy the Kid is happening next Monday. That's right, next Monday. That is September the 5th. I know it's Labor Day, but by the end of the day, you should have wound down the drinking and revelry and debauchery. Uh, and that's going to take place at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 6 Pacific, 5 Mountain, 4... Uh, wait a minute, did I... <laughs> 7 Eastern, 6 Central five mountain and four pacific and wherever else you are at your time um live chat will be enabled so we can talk you can ask questions you can proffer insults <laughs> you can uh get to uh, weigh in and chat with each other and uh, what will we talk about well we'll talk about all things billy the kid whatever comes up between now and then I'll have uh, some recollections, hopefully, from my trip to Markle, Windy Cahill's grave. And uh, we'll talk about whatever has changed between now and then. So join me. And the the, uh, the intent is to see if there's enough material, enough interest, if I'm even good enough to hold your interest, to do a live show once a week. And so we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. But today, I want to talk to you about Billy the Kid photographs and uh, we took we took a deep dive moderately deep dive into the one known tintype i say one maybe one and a half known tintype uh, well, let's put the croquet in there the croquet photo but uh, let's take another look at what i'm going not sure what happened there let's take a, another look uh one look at what i'm going to call the montano billy photograph and here it is so you've seen this photo and uh, there is uh, some provenance I don't know why my uh, meeting thing is acting so strange sorry there is some uh, provenance for this photo potentially being Billy the Kid so I did a little research and reached out to some people who would know. And uh, I want to talk more about this one because it is interesting. On first glance, the one thing you look at and you go, hey, Billy was 5'7 or 5'8. Yeah, maybe that looks like him, but that he'd have to be riding like a Shetland pony. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about the horse more. Um, I don't think if that's Billy, that that was Billy's horse. In fact, I don't think that even if it's not Billy, that that was the horse of whoever the rider is. Um, but let's talk about that. Here's some research via Lucas Spear. Thank you, Lucas, uh, from Steve Cedarwall. Have you seen this picture? It's in the University of New Mexico, Las Cruces. James Tomblinson. T-O-M-B-L-I-N-S-O-N, took it. Tomlinson was a druggist, not a druggie, a druggist, and a photographer in Lincoln. Tomlinson was also the probate judge on April 1st, 1878, very famous day in the world of Billy the Kid, the day Brady, Sheriff Brady, was assassinated. Brady was taken to the courthouse, and Judge Tomlinson did an inventory of the dead man's belongings. That is a whole another story. This picture was taken by Tom Blinson in Lincoln. And on the back of this photo, Tom Blinson wrote Billy the Kid. So is it Billy? Now, we don't know enough more about James Tom Blinson when he, he certainly was in Lincoln, April 1878. Did he stay around for years afterward? Did he leave shortly thereafter? When could this picture have been taken? 
But for absolute certain, that is the Montano store across the street right here. Looks very much as it does today. In fact, Lucas put up a great picture of uh, the side by side uh, of the, uh, uh, you know, the current day Montano store. And you can see the, uh, uh, the, the uh, shape, I guess, the uh, outline, the profile of the hills match exactly. It's unquestioned that this picture was taken in Lincoln on the north side of 380 or the uh, you know whatever the the road is called and that is the the uh montano store on the south side across the street uh as an aside not a sales pitch <laughs> but for those that have read my back to billy books this young man is also sitting right at the outside corner of the house of the lovely rosita luna um, and that is a story, uh, just weird story about writing the book, which I've told in the past. Maybe I'll fill you in before we finish here. Uh, okay. So Tomlinson was a photographer on the back of this photo. He writes Billy the kid. And if you zoom in and the resolution is not great, obviously, but it's good enough to see if you zoom in, what do we have? We've got the sloped shoulders. I mean, that is a, a an absolutely defining characteristic of the one known photograph we have of Billy, those sloped down shoulders, um, not, not a really strong frame or countenance. And we've got that. Uh, we've got the, the kind of rounded, you know, kind of soft chin. Uh, absolutely. We have that. We have what appears to be a sombrero, which was Billy's chosen headwear and probably was the chosen headwear of a number of guys riding in New Mexico to keep the sun off of uh, their face. We've got that too. Um, I don't know that you can go much further. Yeah, I mean, the lips protrude a little bit. Is there a couple teeth pushing them out? Maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't buy into the whole uh, small hands and big wrists myth. So I don't think that that really matters. But I've had a number of people point out that uh, this guy doesn't look very comfortable on this horse as though he's not quite the horseman that you might think uh, he would be. Um, and the, the, the challenge there is Billy wouldn't ride a nag. I mean, this horse is kind of skin and bones, uh, at least to my eye, and I am not a horseman. Um, but it's certainly not the kind of horse that you'd expect an outlaw who might need to make a quick getaway to be riding. And so people have speculated, well, it can't be Billy. First of all, he wouldn't ride a horse that small. And if he were to do that, uh, it just, uh, he, he, his horse would not be in this bad of condition. And so that's a fair assessment of the photo. But Tom Blinson was a druggist, a probate judge, and a photographer in Lincoln during the Lincoln County War. And he took this photo and he wrote Billy the Kid on the back. When did he write that? I don't know. So the biggest challenge here is the size of the rider, who looks to be well bigger than 5'8", if he's riding a reasonably sized horse, and the condition of the horse. So I contacted our UK correspondent, Mel Ubna, and asked Mel, who's also our resident horse expert, uh, a little bit more about horses and because I don't really know anything about them and I asked how are horses measured like how would you even measure this horse and horses are measured in hands that's the unit of measurement now I asked how big a hand was and a hand is four inches they could have used other body parts from certain guys probably that are four inches but <laughs> but they chose to use a hand uh, because they wanted some <laughs> whatever <laughs> but anyway um that's what they it would be funny to forget it so she estimated this horse at about uh let's see do 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 do, do. most cow ponies were around 14.2 to 16 hands but the average would be around 15 hands now go to the photo and hands are measured from the from the, the ground to the withers, the withers, not Bill Withers, but the withers, which would be the top of the shoulders, basically right up around here. 
Um, so 14.2 to 16 hands. Uh, Mel sent me a picture of her on a 14 hands pony. And she is, uh, she's five, four, um, roughly on a 14 hands pony. And she looks appropriately sized for it. Uh, this guy doesn't look three inches taller than Mel does. In fact, let me just bring this over. The, I don't think she'll mind. So there's the, this is a 14 hands pony. This is a rider who's five foot four. And so you've got a situation there where the rider looks reasonably sized to the horse. But this rider does not look reasonably sized to the horse. And you say, well, Billy's 5'7 or 5'8. He's only four inches taller. Does he fit, you know, could this horse better? It looks awfully small. But Mel went on to say, let me uh, get to that. Uh, the average horse Billy would have ridden would have been somewhere around 15 hands. And 15 hands, probably Billy would have looked about like Mel looked on that size horse. And this guy doesn't. He looks much, much taller. So uh, so in the photo of the so-called Billy, look at how tall the guy must be in proportion uh, to the horse. Uh, so she, she says, if this is Billy the Kid in this photo, then that horse that you see can be no bigger than 13 hands, which would be eight inches shorter. Let me see if I have something eight inches I can use to show you. <laughs> All right. So let's come back here for a minute. So there is eight inches. So that horse would be that much higher, 15 hands, um, and broader and bulkier, etc., uh, in order to have Billy, uh, you know, look proportional on it. So that's how much smaller this horse would be if we were to, uh, if we were to assume this is Billy the Kid. So it's the it's it's really a challenge to say, hey, yeah, this is this is the kid, except for one thing that. This is probably not the rider's horse, Billy or anybody else. Remember, tintypes require that the subject be still for a few seconds, completely still. In fact, people say that the misshapen jaw in Billy's tintype is because he probably had some movement, you know, during that uh, amount of time. The sur surmising, someone surmises, uh, a few riders and horse people have surmised that this is actually the photographer's pony. Essentially, it's a prop. It's a real horse, but it's not uh, a horse that anybody would ride. It does not look in you know very strong or great condition. And that it was a horse that would sit still, stand still, and as such would be easily uh, photographed. So, all right, now we have a possibility that this is Billy. A photographer comes through town, is going to take pictures of cowboys on horseback and says, hey, your horse is too spirited. You're, it's tapping around. It's moving its head. I can't take a picture. Get on my pony and uh, you'll have a picture. And there's a few cues to this horse that show the fact that it's probably used to standing still. Mel pointed out that the horse's eyes are closed which uh, looks to uh, portray some sort of boredom. And also you can see that right leg in the back is lifted. If this has been corrected, by the way, which we think it has corrected left to right, if it's a tintype, that right leg is lifted. So the horse isn't even standing on that, which would or could prove that the horse is either tired or bored. In other words, this is just, I don't feel like standing here anymore, but this is all I get to do. And so if that's the case, it's very possible. I won't even say likely, but it's possible we have a photographer's horse, specially trained to stand still 
while different cowboys and cowgirls sat on its back and had their photograph taken by James Tomlinson. And if that's the case, this could this could be a 13 hands pony, not in great shape, certainly not the kind of horse that Billy would use to go and steal cattle and other horses and need to get away and make a break for. Um, but that could be Billy the Kid staring back at you. And I look at the all of the circumstantial evidence. There's a sign down here. It's something store. Can't tell what it is. Um, somebody joked around and said drugstore, but if it was Tomlinson, who was a druggist, it could be, maybe he had a store somewhere here. It could say drugstore, but the first word is unreadable. The second word is almost definitely store. So now we've got a guy with sloped shoulders, kind of a slight build, a sombrero, a kind of roundish chin, um, definitely or almost definitely an Anglo guy. And uh, all of a sudden you could be staring face to face with the one and only William H. Bonney. What do you think? I look at it and go, man, I, I, to me, it's if you can accept the horse description explanation I think you got a really good chance that this is Billy Bonnie, especially those shoulders, kind of the pigeon chest. Like at least what we can see from the other tin type is Billy did not have a strong build. That's not who he was. This guy looks young. Uh, he It could be as early as late 1877, but because he doesn't have a jacket on, uh, it seems to be a warmer period of time. To me, it would make more sense that it was probably taken sometime 1878 uh, or perhaps even later. But you've got to look at it and go, well, okay, 1878, would Tomlinson be setting these guys up in the street to take photographs during the heart of the, or the height of the Lincoln County War? Probably not. Could be, but probably not. Uh, was it uh, later in 1878? Well, maybe, but the regulators had kind of pulled out, uh, ridden for Fort Sumner, Doc and Charlie are moving there. So, you know, obviously we we know so little of what actually happened with Billy on most of the days of his life that there certainly could have been a day where there was no threat of danger and the war was over or there was a lull in the action and a photographer said, hey, let's take some photos, a buck for four. Uh, and it could have been that this photo was taken during that time. But based on everything else I see, uh, you would have to find a window of time where Billy would be in, you know, work clothes um, and not bundled up with a sweater or a jacket or a coat or something like that. And so it would have to be some warm time when he could have been in Lincoln unfettered. Could this have been when he was under arrest in Lincoln, under fake arrest by Copeland in 1879, arranged by Lou Wallace? Sure, it could have been. Juan Patron's place, if you look here, if you were to go around the corner of Rosita Luna's house and look to the right, Juan Patron's place is just, oh, I don't know, a couple hundred feet down the road. And so, yeah, if you, here's, if you can see the cursor, you know, here and then go this way. Uh, Patron's place is on the south side of the street, not very far away, where Billy was imprisoned. And he was allowed to, you know, walk about town uh, with his arms. And so, the yeah, and Doc Skurlock was there, Folliard was there. So there, there were plenty of people to protect him. Maybe they got their pictures taken. Maybe so. To me, it's tantalizing. If you ask me, do I believe it's Billy the Kid? I have to tell you that I believe it could be. I believe that there's a good chance, especially with Mel's analysis of the horse here, that it could be Billy on a tiny photographer's horse. And that as such, we have another photo of Billy the Kid. But I don't know that you're ever going to get 
any more provenance than that, unless you can follow Tomlinson back in time and see if there's any other photos connected to this period of time. One with a guy who looks like Folliard, who this could possibly be, and maybe that's big Bigfoot Tom Folliard, um, or other photos of the regulators or principals in Lincoln or the Lincoln County War. So it's a huge maybe, but I look at it and I think, at least for myself, I think I think it's Billy the Kid. I really do. I don't think you'll ever prove it. I don't think you'll ever sell the photo for $2.4 million or $5 million. But I think you can look at this and have a reasonable uh, chance and a reasonable belief that you're looking at William H. Bonney. And that, to me, is really, really cool. So that's one of the uh, photos that we're going to analyze today, but we're going to take a look at another one. And this is one I've never, ever seen before. Uh, and it was sent to me uh, via Twitter by my buddy from the Great White North, Christopher. Um, and uh, there's not not that many people use Twitter as far as uh, for, for communication, but Christopher has. Nice guy. We've had some good conversations. And he sent me this photo just this morning. And uh, I'm, I'm going to read you uh, his message or just a, a bit of it. Uh, uh, morning, Michael, forgive me, but I'm hoping you can dismiss something for me. I understand that. Last podcast on the tin types was good stuff and brought this to mind. This pick, bear with me here, for some reason makes my spidey senses tingle. Weren't the boys meaning Billy, uh, Wilson, Rudabaugh, fitted in new suits in Santa Fe when awaiting trial. I thought one of the merchants donated suits saying they wanted to see the boys go out in style or something like that. And this fellow looks to be in handcuffs. Has this pic already been debunked? Kind of weird that it speaks to me the way it does. To me, the facial looks close, though, I don't know, curly brown hair. Notice the sunlight on his forehead. Anyway, can I dismiss this one? And I looked at it, uh, you know, not for hours, but I looked at it and I said, no, I don't think you can definitely dismiss this photo at all. Um, I don't know that it's Billy the Kid, but there's enough similarities that we should at least take it seriously. And so let's take a look, at least for the first time for me, at what might be William H. Bonney. Now, as I said, Sue Stevenson did... Uh, did the research and there were 7.1 million young men between 18 and 20, between 18 years old and 25 years old back in 1880. So, and this guy doesn't even have the scrunched face, you know, that Billy has in the famous tin type, but have a look at this before we go anywhere else. I don't see this guy as wearing handcuffs. I see he's holding his hands as if he would, if he had cuffs on, but, and maybe, I don't know, are they hidden? Is this a cuff kind of up inside here? I, I don't know. I don't see anything that looks like a chain. Um, yeah, I don't I don't see any proof that the guy's wearing handcuffs. Um, but I don't know. Look at the face. We've got the nose, kind of the slender nose that we're, you know, we've come to uh, understand. The mouth is closed, so we can't really make a determination if there's any teeth. We definitely have the rounded chin. We cannot see the ears really well, so there's not a lot there. The hair certainly looks unruly enough <laughs> to be Billy. Um, the shoulders absolutely slope. Uh, maybe not as much as what we would see in the uh, in the Coke tin type, but you know the, 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 you've also got the the point of the sleeve here. Um, and this guy probably has a hard time finding a jacket that fits him right because his shoulders seem to end around here and the jacket seems to end around here. And if you've got, you know, pretty dramatically sloping shoulders, that's probably a pretty common occurrence. This chap seems to be well-dressed. He's got a, looks like a chain for a pocket watch here, I would imagine. That would, might be a little much for a prisoner. Like, hey, I'm going to give you a new suit and I'm going to give you a pocket watch and a chain. Um, but I don't know. 
Uh, and uh, again, I don't give any sort of credence to the hands and wrists. I think that that's all basically a fable. So are there any other clues to this photo? Is this a photographer's background or is this some kind of tent? To me over here, it looks like it might have been a table with some fringed table covering or cloth on it, which leads me to believe it's some sort of prop. So I'm assuming this is a photographer's backdrop. The picture seems to be relatively well lit. So it looks like it's taken by a professional photographer, uh, like you would expect to find in and around Santa Fe. But there's no other provenance. This picture came to uh, 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 Christopher by uh, via Pinterest. And, you know, if you look for Billy the Kid on Pinterest, you'll find 10,000 pictures of scrunched faced young men. But I, I, I got to tell you, I can't throw this one away. I can't say that it's even likely Billy the Kid because there's zero provenance. There's nothing at all. It's probably not him, but certainly the features look similar to what we've known about Billy, the rounded chin. And I, you know, I don't think that this guy moved during this picture is there kind of the widely set eyes, the narrow nose. Yeah. I mean, it could be him. So when you get pictures like this, this the, these are the ones that I say, if you want this to be Billy, then just make it him. Don't try to <laughs> sell it. Don't try to sell anybody else on the fact that it's Billy. Don't post it in a bunch of social media groups going, hey, guess who this is? Because people get irate about that. But just put it on your computer background, print it out, put it on the wall and just say, hey, it's Billy. The Kid. To me, that's Billy. Because that's what we do with Billy the Kid anyway. We just make him to be the person that we want him to be. I saw somebody write uh, earlier, I'm paraphrasing, but I idolize Billy the Kid because of uh, what he fought for and who he fought with. And I, I don't, I, the word idolize is really, really strong. Um, doesn't the Bible say that you should not worship false idols? Like idolizing an outlaw and a rustler and a guy who murdered men seems silly to me, but that's just me. But somebody else might say, yeah, I, I idolize the guy like, like where, you know, I'm not worthy. I, I, I don't see that with Billy the Kid. I'm interested in him, interested in his story and his life. And I find much of it fascinating. Um, but people make him into what they want. And so if you can do that here with whoever you think he is, the murdering punk, the freedom fighter, the hero of the Hispanics, the jocular singing and dancing lover boy, whoever he is to you, you certainly can also do it when you're finding pictures or looking for pictures. And this might as well be Billy the Kid for you if you want him to be. You'll never prove, I don't think, that it's not him. You'll also never prove, I don't think, that it is. And so it exists in that nebulous world of, hey, close enough is good enough. That's Billy the Kid. And you should enjoy it. Because the kid is whoever you want him to be. Finding the real person behind the legend, behind the the mental creation that we uh, that we all do, uh, would be fascinating. Uh, but I don't think we're going to find that out. We're going to need time travel in order to, <laughs> to actually ferret that one out. Uh, and that's the reason people argue about it. If there were enough facts, if there were a video, if there were. Um, you know, I, I don't know, Billy wrote a diary or something, we'd probably have a better idea and, and more people would agree on who he is. But because we don't, because we all have our own viewpoint and we really don't have much to go on other than remembrances of a few of his friends and enemies, that's why people fight over it. Because my Billy's better than your Billy. Your Billy's a murdering punk, but my Billy is a 
freedom fighter standing up against the Santa Fe ring. And don't you dare tell me that he wasn't. We've made him into so many different things. I don't think we're ever going to scratch all that away and find who the real William H. Bonnie was, what kind of pie he liked. Uh, we're not going to find out what, you know, what his favorite dance step was or, uh, you know, what he really liked to wear when he was in Fort Sumner dancing with the ladies. We're not going to find out when he went to a restaurant, what the one thing, when he and Folliard were, you know, did, 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 you know, the riding up to uh, the restaurant in, uh, or, or Henry Hoyt up in Las Vegas and uh, Hoyt says, oh, Billy, what are you going to have for dinner? And Billy goes, oh, man, I've just been dying for an awesome blossom. <laughs> so I'm going to get one of those and uh, I'm going to get uh, a shrimp cocktail. Like, we're just not going to know. I'd like to, but we're not. So make him who you want. And if you want him to be this guy, then that's who he is. If you want him to be this guy then that's who he is. But I think this guy is way more likely to be Billy than this guy. This photo has no provenance. This photo's got some. It's got some problems, but it's got some provenance. And I, I, I'd i say better than 50%, just my opinion, that you're looking face-to-face -face with William H. Bonney El Chivito, Billy the Kid. So enjoy that. All right. So uh, what else is coming up on All Things Billy? Well, we're just a day or two away from the big trip down to Bonita, Arizona to uh, mark the grave of Windy Cahill. I just got word. I Gosh, I don't know if I'm allowed to announce this, so I don't think I will. But uh, it's, it's, again, it's not my kill. It's not my news. But it was relayed to me um, that there is another uh, very important grave marking that's going to happen by Billy the Kid's Historical Society in conjunction with Cold West Detective Agency. Um, and this is a big one, and it's a grave that had been lost. Uh, so that's going to happen pretty soon that's the next one um and so we'll try to if we can be there if we're invited <laughs> we'll uh we'll go down and we'll take some video and we'll show you you know all the fun and festivities of that and i do think it's an important uh effort to to preserve these historical spots um i i i do because our history is is slipping. We're building over our history. We're plowing under our history. We're knocking our history down so we can build new buildings. Um, but in especially out here in the Southwest, it's so vast and it's so uh, underpopulated that these areas can remain untouched or at least minimally touched. And for future generations to go and for people to become fascinated, whether you idolize Billy or you're interested in him or you worship him or you whatever, um, these things will be here for many, many years after we're gone. So I think it's a, an absolutely cool effort, and uh, I'm glad to at least play some small part in that. Okay, so what can you do to help things keep going? Well, join me for the live, Billy the Kid Live, The Tonight Show, with my sidekick, Ed, <laughs> Ed Doc Skurlock McMahon. No, no sidekick for this one. Um, the other thing you can do is you can smash that like button. That really helps make sure that the videos get seen by more people. The other thing you can do is keep commenting. Even when you comment that, hey, Michael, you're an idiot and you don't know what you're talking about and Brushy Bill was absolutely Billy the Kid and I hate you. I don't care. The more, <laughs> the more you comment, the better it is for more people to see the video. So like and comment, subscribe is great. I appreciate it. Um, I have put in, uh, I'm not asking, no, no pity. I've put in a lot of time to get the channel to this point so I could reach this many people and I'd like to reach more and you can help me do that. So until next time, we're going to go out on a high note and I'm going to say that we have yet another photograph 
that I truly believe to be William H. Bonney. Hey, Billy, get yourself a better horse next time. And uh, we'll see you all down the road on all things Billy the Kid. Bye.